Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It's Darian with Darian and Tech. I want to talk about the most important or some of the most important skills that I think you need as a product manager. It's a quick backstory for anybody that doesn't know who's not familiar to the channel. I used to be a software engineer. I went to coding bootcamp and then a few years into my software engineering career, I transitioned into product. Uh, so I became a technical product manager and right now I'm a product owner. It's a very different world than the software engineering world. And I just want to talk about some of the important skills that I've noticed that are extremely important if you're looking to kind of move into the product world. The first one on my list is self-discipline. Your ability to self-organize is going to be so important to how things kind of work on your teams and how things function, how processes work and how efficient the team is. A lot of that comes down to the product person, your ability to get requirements out and kind of like make those requirements good or understandable and, you know, get the information that you need when you need it. And there's a lot of different aspects of that, but the point being that there's nobody really over your shoulder, kind of like micromanaging you or making sure you get your work done or even telling you what you need to do or how you need to get it done. A lot of it is you intrinsically having an understanding of all the things that are kind of on your plate and knowing how you need to juggle those things or how you need to organize your time and focus your energy to get those things done. So a lot of it is going to be on you to pretty much just have self-discipline and know yourself. So the next one kind of falls in line with that, which is time management. Uh, I think that was huge because, again, it, it goes back to kind of, like I said, with discipline where you've only got so many hours in a day or in a lot of cases, even on the weekends, if you need to get something done or if you have to work late at night, like you need to know that you need to know how best to manage your own time. You need to know how you work. Like, are you a morning person? Do you work better at night? All those things are incredibly important in just knowing how to structure your day and your time. And I also want to say with time management too, like knowing how to like, for example, book meetings with other people and, you know, how to effectively, you know, plan and book a meeting and also facilitate and run it because, yeah, you're going to have to know how to not only manage your own time, but other people's time as well. Because you might have people in your team or people in the company that you need to talk to or get, you know, certain information from, but their time might be very limited or they might be pulled in a lot of different directions or, you know, they might have a lot of things just on their calendar. So, just knowing how to, again, kind of like manage that and facilitate that is super important. My third one is communication. And I put all forms because there's so many, you know, different types of communication that are important in the product kind of like role or in the product world. So a couple of the ones that I, I wrote down were, you know, speaking and writing or, you know, written and verbal communication. Presentations for sure are huge. Uh, meeting facilitation like we just talked about. And then conflict resolution is is a really big one. Obviously, I'm not saying like stopping fights or anything like that, but you know, you're gonna have a lot of different opinions about things and you might run into a lot of stalemates when it comes to making a decision. You might have different stakeholders who are, you know, on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to making a decision, but you need them to come to a, a general agreed upon consensus and like you have to get that decided upon and you have to like help drive that decision so um you know conflict resolution in that sense um and then also like technical writing and documentation when it comes to like user stories and like i said requirements or you might have to just document a process there's a ton of different things that you need to actually be able to write and communicate or just do um so communication comes in a lot of different forms but it's a big one so if you're a person that's like i know that when i did engineering a lot of times it becomes, you know, kind of like a habit to get used to not talking in meetings and kind of just sitting there not having to really participate until somebody like asks you a question or you really need to like chime in on something. Um, of course, this all depends on what company you work at. But um, I know for me and my personal experience, you know, meetings as an engineer, you kind of hate them and you're kind of just there because you have to be. But in the product world, you know, is is very, very different. A lot of times you're the one facilitating the meeting or you're like heavily involved in the meeting, even if it's just like taking notes and documenting what's going on in the meeting. So it's just very important that you have all these, you know, kind of these different communication styles that you kind of, you know, have in your, your, tool, your tool belt and that you can kind of pull from at different times. Because again, you might have to present to the entire company or communicate a release or communicate something to like, an external client 
you know, on a call. So my next skill is project management. And I think that that's important because I think a lot of people look at pro project management as its own career, which of course it is in a lot of ways, and especially in other industries. Um, you know, project management is a huge, huge thing. And there's a lot of different types in like of project management, a lot of different levels to it as well. So I guess I'm speaking more from a skill set perspective here on like the skills that make up a good project manager will also be found in a good product manager. So a lot of things related to project management, like, you know, risk assessment, um, budgeting, cost analysis, managing and sort of like tracking dependencies between like different projects and the timeline. Those skills are incredibly important as well too. Um, those are gonna tie into some of the business skills. We'll talk about that in a second. And my next one was, was product. So, you know, the product skills obviously encompass a lot of different things. So the product specific stuff that I kind of listed down, like business analysis skills. So, I mean, that's a lot of different things, obviously like your competitive advantage and your market research and like use cases and just the ability to, you know, understand markets and user behavior and like all these different things, metrics, analytics. I think that kind of ties in well with the next thing. Uh, and these are all kind of bullets, by the way, like underneath the product skills. Um, so you've got like UI, UX stuff. So you're gonna have to work very, very closely with UI, UX designers, and you need to be able to kind of speak their language and communicate things to them and communicate ideas of what product wants and kind of give them requirements, but also just enough direction for them to be creative with it without, you know, maybe kind of like over architecting or trying to like direct them too much, like letting them do their job still. But and that goes back to having good communication. But yeah, just having a good understanding of like UI, UX fundamentals, you know, how a uh, certain software should work or being able to look at other softwares in your industry and really compare, you know, certain behaviors or like understand what is considered like an industry standard or a best practice or what makes one workflow or user experience better than another one. Uh, and yeah, being able to kind of like interpret those things and articulate those things is super important. You also want to understand what your users pain and pleasure points are. Um, and that sounds a little bit weird. So let me clarify what I'm saying, but basically you want to understand what do your users hate or find difficulty in doing and what do they need help with? Like what do they come to your software to achieve and do, but you also need to understand for the users that do use your software what is it that they they love about it? What do they use the most? And why do they use it the most? What makes it good? What makes them come back and continue using that thing over and over again? So you want to understand both sides of the spectrum and uh, pretty much like everything in between too. Like I feel like there's not really a lot that falls outside of products kind of like realm. There are some things that are more high priority than others or like things you should probably focus on more than others. But there's a lot of different things that I feel like are a product, you know, sort of responsibility or skill. The next thing is also like QA and just being able to, you know, and that stands for like quality assurance, but being able to test things as well too. So not only are you writing the requirements, but once the engineers finish the work, it's kind of your job also to test all those different edge cases and all the things that can possibly happen with that software. So you also want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're able to understand what or how the software should work ideally versus how it currently works right now. QA is a huge skill that, you know, is very important for product to work with engineering a lot of times, especially if you don't have QAs at a company to be able to make sure your product is, you know, up to standard before you release it. And the last thing I'll say under the product skills is feedback. So being able to get feedback, you know, elicit feedback from, you know, internal and external customers and really make sense of all that feedback, right? So how do you gather it? How do you turn it into data that you can make decisions with? And how do you communicate that data to other people and make decisions with it? So there's a lot that comes with the feedback loop as well, too. But that's going to be a huge part of any product person's life. And um, yeah, I hope y'all found this helpful. I just wanted to share this a little bit as I get deeper into kind of my my role in my world and product. I want to just kind of share some of the things that, that I find um, going along. So yeah, let me know down in the comments if y'all found this helpful. And I'll see y'all next video.